Hi, I'm Ryan North. I'm Lori Fungi. And I'm Sean Wilson. You're listening to Foster Family Matters, a production of CK Family Services. People united through God to enhance the physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being of at-risk children and families. Welcome back to Foster Family Matters. We are so excited that you have decided to join us once again. Um, we're, uh, I think, 14 episodes into this at this point in time, and, and we're having a lot of fun, I think, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hands down, we sure are. We yeah. sure are. Absolutely. Now, um, before we get started, yeah. some of this actions. Um, we discuss these things ahead of time, so it's not just like, mm, I feel like talking about... But before we jump into it, um, first person to comment in the Facebook group about what's different, um, we'll send one of our favorite books. How about that? Can we yeah. do that? Agreed. It, does it have to be like a specific thing if somebody just says like it's a different day like what if they say sean's hair is down well See, clearly those two things have been disqualified now <laughs> all right well i guess Lori gets it Yay! <clears throat> what book do i get i don't know you have all the ones we talk about so. <laughs> i know you get one of ryan's yet to be published books <laughs> Chapter Ooh, two. Wow. Yeah. That's nice of you to suggest <laughs> that there's a chapter two already. <laughs> a little well, generous on my part. Very generous on your part. So um, I, let's just let's just state the obvious. Um, and and uh, yes, let's let's do that. There's there's some clear changes that have that have happened. And, and so uh, comment on them. We'll see. You'll you'll get something pleasant from us. Um, it's like those LOL surprise dolls at my, my daughter's. Mm, you guys. Yes. Yeah. See, see. And then like they're like. Oh my gosh! I'm like, it's these silly little dolls and the box and all, everything's wrapped up in something like, and like, what water bottle did you get? So apparently, like mystery box surprises are like big. Again. Oh, people love it. It's the whole like unboxing Again, therapy. I didn't know deal, that right? they went out of style. Mm, yeah, maybe. Do you remember like, the grab bags like at the mall? You paid no. five dollars for a bag and you had no idea what was no, in it. I would, oh. I would never go along with that. Like that is, um, it was awesome. I like predictability too. Much. I had like elementary school teachers that had grab bags that you could reach into to get a prize, but never at the mall. Really? Oh yeah, hmm. Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. I've never Where been there. Where the cheese You've never been to Wisconsin. <laughs> no. What? Oh, what? <laughs> <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to point out that I can see is apparently it's blue shirt day and Lori didn't get the memo. I did not get I'm the looking, memo. I'm, I'm looking here and, and, and the two fine gentlemen sitting at the table are, are decked out exactly in the same, like it's a uniform or something. Yeah, so You do look a little uniform. It's interesting though that on blue shirt day, you wore pink shirt and we went like with really traditional gender color things over there. The boys all blue, the girls. You know I'm not a conformist, so I don't know why that's surprising to either one of you. Well Yeah. That's true. Except for what he just said, you kinda of conformed <laughs> to that. Like you didn't conform to the memo, but you did conform to, to the like, larger gender norms. Uh, all right. nonetheless, we digress. There's a third thing that I've noticed. Has become has become our custom. Do you know what's the third thing I've noticed? Mm -mm. Kids are about to go back to school. Kids what? are about to go back to yes. school. Oh, yeah. For some of you, perhaps, maybe they already have. Um, that was a really brave attempt to <laughs> bring us on topic. I'm, I'm trying. But kudos to you. Thank yeah, you so much. I mean, that's at least a, a B plus for effort. Oh. I see what you did there. B minus. I ignore what you did there. So, so we have rambled long enough. I, I think we've lost our our fifty percent quota, like like typical. Um, so we can get into the good stuff. Those of you who are brave enough to stick through our intros uh, actually get to the the context. Uh, so today's episode is kind of a uh, the summer is ending and and we're headed uh, back to school, uh, and uh, we want to help prepare you for that. Yep. So that can be that can be a traumatic time. It can be a time of celebration. It can be a time of of nothingness. Um, D all the above. All of yeah. the above. So the above. let's talk about it. And for both, all of those things you said, I think are true for both parents and children. Not just true for the children, right? Right. Because right. some, some parents are like, oh my gosh, the kids are getting back to school. That's awesome. And some of them are like, oh my gosh, the kids are getting back to school. That's really, really hard. So I think I want to recognize um, just that the, the stuff we could talk about is not just specifically about the kids, but some of the kind of applied parents as well. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm out of curiosity with homeschooling. What does that look like? Is there is there any shift in? I don't know, Laurie. I come into this office five days a week. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to call and get my wife from the phone? I, yes, let's call in Kayla. 
Um, so, so I mean, I w- do you notice any differences in your in your kiddo's temperament, knowing that they're probably going to buckle down a little bit more? So, I know yeah. she continues studies throughout, but I, from what I understand, it's not as rigorous as when yeah, so, the school years actually so, occurring. So she'll keep going with the kids on some stuff, particularly if it's a subject that they're struggling with. So if they're struggling in math, you know, they'll focus a little bit more on math in the summer. Uh, but but we're not pure homeschooling in that the kids are part of a um, we're co-op. Part of a co-op mm-hmm. lab. For the last four years, this year we're <coughs> getting part of something that's a little bit more structured type of um private school but they do only go um the younger kids go one day a week the same in the co-op the high school kids actually go a couple of days a week um but so they yeah it changes because there's there's it's a little bit more intense it's obviously more focused they're excited to be around um friends again yeah. that i haven't seen much in the summer and things like that so yeah the nature of it changes and and like anything back because you got to pack lunches and it's a little more structured mm-hmm. the day's a little more structured at home um and uh and the week's a little bit more structured. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. And the kids are generally excited about it. Yeah. At least they all seem so this year. <clears throat> I so, think, oh, go ahead, Sean. Little known fact. I was homeschooled. All the way through to what grade? Um, In high school, junior high. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, uh, we kind of cut, we truncated high school a little bit. Uh, but that you was. Mean you graduated early? I graduated early. <laughs> but as a homeschooler, he had to use a big vocabulary word. <laughs> I got to represent for the peeps. <laughs> but um, I was going to comment, and I think it's kind of in line with what you're saying. Uh, it, it uh, as, a, as a student going through this kind of change, the weirdest thing for me was that my friends were in and out of school. I kind of stayed in school year round. Mm. And so <clears throat> because I had been in school and then chose to, to be homeschooled, I, I had a large friend network that were both kind of in our co-op and then also uh, in the community. But that was kind of the the transition for me was I went from like being able to hang out with my friends when I got done with the two and a half hours of school that I did every day uh, to like having to wait for them to get out of school before I could hang out with them. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different dynamics with that. And I, and I, I think they're all just unique for each case and each kiddo. So I think some kiddos can't wait to get back to the socialization aspect mm. and see their friends. Right. And, and some kiddos are really hungry for that structure that they didn't have during the summer. And I think really steering in that direction. We spent a lot of time talking about transitions. And so not spending any more time, but bringing in and and kind of interweaving what does transitions look like and what we need to do to prepare for transitions going into what we know to be another transition. And this is going back to school. And if you've had the opportunity to, to, to listen to those two podcasts, hopefully you're taking away this, this kind of intentionality and this need to plan and prepare. And really all that comes back to us as parents. And so we want to just give you some tips and tools on how to prepare in a couple of weeks right before school starts, because there are some, I think, really tangible things that can be done to help make that transition a little smoother. Yeah, and I, I like the the idea of getting a head start on, just on the school year by transitioning to it instead of it's just... You know, Sunday afternoon's a hard stop for summer because all of a sudden the kids are like, why are we taking baths and showers on a Sunday night and having to go to bed at 8 o'clock? Yes. You know? um, <clears throat> but we already swam today. Why is that not good enough like uh-huh. it was yesterday? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, those kinds of things. And so, um, so, yeah, I think it's really, really great. And then to manage that transition, which is something we've talked about on this show before, is that managing that transition well is really, really important. So. So I think one, just one thing that comes to mind is starting that bedtime maybe a week to two weeks prior to the actual mm. academic school year starting. Yep. So here we are in August, I would say throughout this month, some of you, I have a little friend that's going back to school on the 14th. Um, I have other friends that start on, on the 19th. My kiddos start on the 19th. And so I think we have, an, we have ample time starting on Monday to really start helping our kiddos transition just with the bedtime routine. So it's going to be earlier. Uh, maybe they partake in helping to create their lunches. So having them, encouraging them to be in the kitchen with you that night before, even though they're not packing a lunch and mm. going to school, but helping to prepare the lunch that y'all are going to eat that next day, still during the summer. Um getting ready for your bedtime routine and, and walking them through of this is what time this is going to look like. And in fact, we're going to practice this a couple of times before school starts so that you're ready and prepared and you yeah. know what to expect. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a fantastic tip. My microphone is completely turned down. Oh, there you there are. There we go. Now you can hear me again. <laughs> I'm trying to. 
for those of you who who don't recognize the amount of work that goes into pr <laughs> producing this show, um, I'm trying to play with the faders a little bit to uh, to help with post production. That's why you couldn't hear me. Full but transparency. But now here you are. Welcome to the behind the scenes episode of Foster Family Matters. Um, yes, like bringing the kids in and helping them participate can be absolutely uh, an invaluable uh, piece of uh, preparing them for transition. Yeah. Right. Um, the kind of, you know, the bummer is always uh, sometimes folks, uh, <clears throat> maybe somebody at this table with the name Sean Wilson in the past has, has taken great pains to uh, prepare himself and assume that everybody else was along for the ride mm. uh, for various transitions and uh, kind of realized after the fact, oh, wait, you didn't you didn't get the memo. <laughs> You're the only one prepared and yeah. nobody else yeah. is. Uh, which, you know, kind of sounds like that would be like an advantage of some sort, but it's not, it's not. when you're responsible for the, for the whole lot. Um, so yeah, no, I like that idea of, of, uh, bringing everybody in. What else? Well, I think one, one of the things we discussed was, um, not just going on like meet the teacher night or whatever, mm. but actually, um, <clears throat> having a couple of, uh, test runs for school. So the night before you got your routine, the morning we'll do the school routine, we'll load them up. And, and drive by the school. Yes. That way people have some familiarity with that. And it's not all of a sudden scary. Because uh, new things can be scary. Um, right. I think there's no doubt about that. So, um, yeah. So I think that's a good idea in, in that, we, that we practice outside of the moment. So I feel like, I feel like this episode is um, where we've t taken some things we've talked about in the past and then are looping them back into how we can practically do that. Because we just mm -hmm. did managing transitions. I would doing practice outside of the moment. Um, but I think there's really, really great things because anything that you can do to take a change in, in routine and schedule and make it seem more predictable to the children will be um, will be easier because it's the unpredictability that's scary right. to people. And um, especially if it's, you know, we've gone from elementary school to junior high or made a transition like that or we just had a new placement over the summer and they're mm -hmm. going to a brand new school for the first time. I think allowing them to to get some familiarity with that environment before um, they actually have to function in that environment is, is, is just actually kind to them, yeah. uh, perhaps above anything else. <clears throat> and if you have a kiddo that really requires a lot of other and co-regulation that just hasn't mastered or is not close to mastering just yet, that self-regulation, we really encourage you to to practice this with your kiddo. And so it doesn't just have to be a new placement or a new school that the kiddo is going to, but maybe it's the same school he's gone to for the last three years, but we are able to identify that this child struggles with regulation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be as predictable as possible. And we are going to drive him around the school and say, hey, buddy, remember three months ago, your teacher and your classroom and your friends, and we're going to bring those, those more implicit memories to the front and make them explicit, just like we talked about this summer and the whole brain child and so helping prepare him for success for that school year so you asked earlier about how how that works for homeschooling um yesterday um the new academic environment that the kids are going to be functioning that sounded really weird but for lack of a better term um that group <clears throat> yesterday um rented out like one of those trampoline parks and all the kids from the school which is starting like, you know, in two weeks. Um, they all came and they bounced and played dodgeball. And and so they were able to have a, a fun experience together before they start doing the schooling thing together. Uh, my kids, you know, when I got home yesterday, um, there were stories of excitement. There were stories of kids got smacked in the face playing dodgeball. I mean, it, it was the entire <laughs> emotional gambit um, yesterday when I got home. And so... Um, but yeah, it's fun, and it allowed them to get to meet those people in advance yeah. of having to be around them uh, on a school day. And speaking of me meeting people, Rain, you had referenced, you know, going to to open house night, and <clears throat> I think you were going there. Um, and about to say this, so I'm just gonna fill in your spot for you. But not <laughs> only. <laughs> Going to open house. If you're not completing each other's sentences by episode 14, Laurie, it's never going to happen. <laughs> what do you say, Sean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, back on track. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I didn't have something witty to, enter, to, to, uh, to follow that up with. Um, Sean's response. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I <Maybe>. concur. 
Um, not only doing just open house, but going a couple times to the school. And that, that does take a different level of intentionality on our part as parents mm. because we are reaching out to the school, making those appointments with the teacher, with the diagnostician, with the counselor, with the administrative. If they're open and already available during pre-service hours and during those days, I highly, highly encourage you to reach out to those other professionals and do a one-on-one with them so that you can share you can share a little bit about your kiddo and the the kiddo that's going to be in that environment with them as well. Um, I I do want to to caution you when we're sharing about our children, we're not sharing their history or their trauma. That's not our story to tell. But we can more um, we're more than than encouraged to share behaviors, things that work at home, things that don't work. Help equip and empower the teachers that your kiddos are going to be with so that they can feel successful as well, as well as your child feeling successful in that classroom. Yeah. And, and just to kind of go along with that, because I 100% agree that you need to, um, <clears throat> part of setting your kid up for success in the school here is setting the teacher up for success yes. with your child. Um, but I think for a lot, a lot of times, um, parents have approached this poorly, like they come in and be very demanding. Right. Um, Why did my kid get a B? Or, or, or even like before the school year starts, they're like, hey, what's up, doc? This is what's happening kind of yeah. attitude. And and you catch more flies with... When they say that, are they chewing on a carrot? <laughs> <laughs> In your experience. And, be, and bemoaning the fact that they didn't take a left turn at Albuquerque, yes. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, um, anyhow, um, but but instead of being this this, could we talked about it in the whole brain child instead of a command and demand approach right. with your children, you shouldn't have a command and demand approach at the school either because our responsibility. I'm a firm believer that our responsibility in in relational matters is um, whatever I can do to build a bridge between me and my child is the thing I must do, and whatever will build a wall between us is the thing I mustn't do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's good relationship advice. And I think it's particularly good relationship advice with the, in in the school environment because. Um, what, what's that phrase? You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar? Absolutely true, because, um, you know, if you're nice, people want to be around you. If you're kind of like demanding, people try to head the other way when they see you coming down the hallway. And, and, and the way you approach your teacher certainly will has the high potential to influence how your teacher views your child. Mm-hmm. And so find out what Mrs. McGillicuddy's favorite, um, I worked for a guy, Mrs. McGillicuddy was the his example all the time. So find out what her favorite thing is at <clears throat> Sonic and go with that in your hand and, and build a relationship with the teacher. Um, you know, don't if you want to give them, let's just say you want to give them a copy of the connected child. Don't like say, well, I've underlined the stuff you need to really think of. Like, hey, if you if you have a time um, to to read this this year, this was really helpful in our family and connecting mm-hmm. with our, our our son, our daughter, whatever. Don't say uh, email the subject line list of resources and then just have like you know quiz to follow. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and then and then and you were nice. You hyperlinked them to to Amazon. You didn't just send them the yeah. names, just right? Send them a link to ckuniversity.org. <laughs> Take all these like, trainings. There's this fantastic behavior management course. There we go. Uh, hosted by Ryan North and Lori Fungi. And then you might find very useful in managing my child's behavior. There's <laughs> Watch a coupon. all six hours in one sitting. And, and so, um, you know, we have to do, 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 do the work that, because remember I said anything that builds a wall between you and your child. Well, being lousy to the teacher and demanding and rude is going to build a wall because even though they did get a degree in education, it turns out that they are still people as well. And so if you treat them poorly, it's really hard for us to respond kindly all of the time when we're right. treated, treated poorly. So so let's let's give teachers the respect they deserve. Um, let's certainly honor the profession um, and, and know that it's really, really hard work. My wife is a classroom teacher for 11 years. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of late nights. It's a lot of time away mm-hmm. from the family. Like her first year teaching was the first year of our marriage. And there were times I'm like, like I felt like I didn't have a spouse six months into our marriage because of all the work, right? And so I mean, it is hard on them. It's taxing. And let's remove the barriers. Time and money are barriers to everything. So if we can remove the money barriers, if you want them to 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 um, consume a resource, either provide it or find resources that are free. Right. Uh, but sending an email with the, the seven books they buy totaling $200 is not the way to go. Right. I concur. Absolutely. Oh, I got two yeses. Right. <laughs> yeah, you got. An, Thank you, everybody. It's unanimous. <laughs> to be fair, you got an I concur and an absolutely. I'm not sure that you you got yeses from either one of us. <laughs> well, that was a yes. That was a 
<laughs> a very yes. Confirmation? <laughs> a very yes. A lot of affirmation happening in this room. So um, something else to consider. So we've got kind of prepare the teacher to help prepare for our transition, yeah. right? We've got uh, bring the kids in alongside and, and um, something that, that I have, again, I'm drawing a lot from my failures as a parent to, to inform my contribution. Success is a lousy show. teacher, so failure must be a good one. Oh, my gosh. I must be a fantastic student. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I, I've also found that it's important to like if and, and we all have various. Gosh, this is going to sound terrible. But relationship with your child is kind of at the centerpiece of helping them transition into summer and helping yourself have a successful sorry, into school year from summer and and helping yourself with the same thing because um, you can assume that you know what success is going to look like for your child and you can you can be certain of what you think it's going to look like for you for your child. But unless you some way, and it might not be sitting down and like having a, a lecture or a conversation, it might just be casual, you know, picking up cues and reading body language and, and that sort of thing like that. But some of the things that that have impacted the success of the summer to school year transition for me and for my children are things like, is my child really stressed out about somebody that they had a relationship with at school last summer? They haven't had any, or prior to the summer, mm-hmm. they haven't had any contact with that person. And now they're, they're anxious, whether it was, mm. you know, they're excited to see that person or they're fearful of seeing that person or they're, they're wondering, you know, that person said their parents might be moving to the other side of the world, you know, during the summer and, and maybe they're not going to be there anymore. I and mean, there's a lot of those kind of things that especially I think for for most of us who are working adults and, and we may have somebody else that's providing a lot of care for our kids during the summertime. We don't get the the quality time. Mm. Um, if, if you can make time at bedtime, at breakfast time, whenever you're able to on family vacation, take take a chunk of that time to to kind of identify what what potential triggers your child already has charged and ready to fire off. Absolutely. Um, and, then, and then target those things. Right. And and that might look like providing them with relationship advice that might just look look like saying, you know what, whatever happens, I'm here and, and there's an open door and we can come and discuss it, when, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Being, I heard you describe being curious, right? And being the investigator and kind of trying to, because you're in tuned and untuned to your child, you're going to be aware when they start to get triggered and display um, maybe nervousness or anxiousness about the school you're starting. And so you're asking those questions, buddy, tell me what's going on. Tell me what your body's doing. Tell me what you're thinking. What images are you seeing and experiencing and and getting to the root so that you can disarm or at least be a part of disarming the fear of, of what that school year is going to hold for the kiddo. Cause it's, it may not be, Ooh, I want to make the a, it may be like, I'm not, I'm not going to get to see Johnny cause he had to move to Wisconsin. That's absolutely right. Or New Mexico. Right. Or New Mexico. Or New Mexico. Santa Fe, specifically. I can remember. And, yeah, yeah, Santa Fe. Or Albuquerque. <laughs> or Albuquerque. Quickie. Quickie. How did Bugs say it? Yeah, he had like, Quirk, both Quirk. of my hometowns. He had, he had a Brooklyn Shout accent. out to New Mexico. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. We're big in New Mexico. We are. Oh, we're, we're, we're not very big in New Mexico. Well, I only so. have one dad living there. So. Okay. <laughs> it's the only fan base. But he, but he downloads each episode like six times. It's weird. <laughs> he does. Um, he and, loves me and, yeah, very much. Bug, back to Bugs Bunny. Yes. He said it with a Brooklyn accent, you know, oh, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Okay. Albuquerque. All right. Yeah, I think it's fair to. I think we can all agree that Ryan is uh, our linguistics expert on on the panel. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Wow. <laughs> I, I thought we had consensus. I was wrong. Well, not, I can see the point. I'm not sold yet. Well, what a great episode it's been. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been let me all join us. Let me piggyback a join little bit. Join us next time when we when Lori and Sean discuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let me let me let me say something because uh, I had a really good thought, and, oh, and of course, my. it's going to completely escape me now. So maybe you should just go ahead and pick it up. It'll come back. I yeah. feel really okay. good about it. Um, being being curious, a little bit of homework for us before the school year starts is is equipping ourselves and educating ourselves on some of the um, the the letters that come with any kind of academic or emotional disturbances or behavioral issues that our kiddos may find themselves in. And those letters, those acronyms are ARD, IEP, BIP, 
and then a 504. And so there's some letters that some of us may not Mm. be familiar with. And if your child, if you have biological children and they've never experienced any kind of learning disability or emotional disability, this is going to be really new and foreign to Mm. you if you have a kid in your home. And you may not quite know the best ways to advocate for that child to be successful within the academic environment. And so some of those letters are, are exactly different meetings that you can have, different behavioral plans different things that that you can advocate for in terms of accommodations in the classroom for your child to be successful, both in the social aspect and the learning aspect. And so um, I am more than happy, I think we're more than happy to provide in the show notes just kind of a brief definitions of what all those letters are so that you can start to inform yourself and prepare yeah. yourself. Great if it never happens, if your child doesn't need some of these some of these special accommodations, but even better if they do need them and you know what they are and how to best advocate. We can, as parents, we can always request under under the state law to to advocate and to have these meetings for our children with the teachers, the diagnosticians, the principals, the vice principals, the counselor, so that we can collectively come together as a team and collaborate on what's going to be best for Johnny. And so I, I, I just... I. It can feel really daunting when it seems unfamiliar or foreign, but I want to empower you that your voice can be heard and is wanting to be heard by other members of, the, of your child's team. And so um, sort of to build that confidence, I think with with wisdom and, and knowledge comes confidence. And so for you to have confidence in how to step forward to be your child's voice. Um, well, I would love to partner with you and, and give you some resources, whether that's on the Facebook group or, or just in our show notes. But um, I, I know that each of us can charge in to any school um, and not be necessarily the mama bear, but the, the one voice that I think our children deserve the most. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, just Ryan, to, just real quick before you get started, I just okay. needed to ask, are you, are you down with BIP? What? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> It fell completely flat. <laughs> I guess too much time passed. You said BIP like five minutes ago. My apologies. Um, Are you not down with BIP? Anyhow, um, what I wanted to say was... Well, he won't even entertain. He's hoping I edit this out. Uh, we're not. Uh, I, no. am, I am not afraid uh-uh. to make myself look like a Because if Con Air wasn't edited, this isn't edited. <laughs> um, you're mostly using words that homeschooling parents don't understand. So, yeah. Um, oh. uh, yeah, so, so yeah, now I feel bad. <laughs> but your mom, um, your mom, sorry, <laughs> Kayla, your children, children's mom, Kayla does as a teacher. She, I mean, she's fully aware of well, what that looks well, like. Well, right? one of our kids is in the public school system. That's right. And, and all of those letters. So I just said that for giggles. We're familiar with all those letters at our home. And what we've learned, though, is um, – there is this idea that asking for help is perceived as weakness that a Absolutely. lot of people have. And I would suggest that it's the opposite. It, presu- it, it, uh, it, is, it uh, is an indicator that you're smart. Because asking for help is an indicator that you recognize there is help. It's also an indicator of healthy relationships. And we talk about those almost ad nauseum in every venue that we can around here. Um, but asking for help is smart. Because getting your kids the accommodations, because if your child um, is making Ds, but if you give them 15 extra minutes for the test and they're making Bs, then, I mean, that's an accommodation you can get in a public that's school. Right. More time to take a test, right? Or to it's have sensory thing. tools and sensory toys yeah. at their get, desk. Get, 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 get a, a hippity hop ball instead of a chair. Yeah. I mean, stuff like that. they get more breaks. Yeah. Then, um, like we have friends, they have written into an IEP that like every hour on the hour, the teacher has to ask him to take something to the, to the, to the office of the mm. school. So they'll just literally like take, write a note. Please send him back, stick in an envelope, and ask him to take it up there, and then to, so he can move and so be move, busy. Move. And, yeah, and, sure. and his behaviors, um, you know, and he's in elementary school. So he's a little a younger guy, but his behaviors have improved considerably since the school started making that accommodation mm-hmm. for the second half of the year. And his mom texted us and told us, like she was like, like there was great rejoicing in heaven because they let him go to the office once an hour, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and she was crying like. Like she was texting, so I called and she texted like, I can't talk right now. I'm too overwhelmed Mm -hmm. just because they made this accommodation at the school and she was seeing the fruit, which then changes the way the school thinks about the kid. That's right. So there's a lot of positive. So so, so again, don't be demanding, but don't be afraid either to go in there and try to get the accommodations that that the law requires, uh, that the school has to give. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things that the law requires school to make accommodations. Um, And they are a little harder on the school. So you'd have to figure that out. So speak to experienced 
um, fostering adoption. See, they were tying community back into it. Mm-hmm. I speak to people who have experience right. with, with this because they, they know how this game is played. And if you have to go down there and sit in a meeting with a counselor, a teacher, and the school principal for an hour on a Thursday, then that's what you got to do to get these things because our youngest, uh, our second youngest daughter is in the public school system, and she gets like therapies, like like therapists will come to school. Yes. The schoolism sign and do therapy in the school. Mm-hmm. So it really is, um, there are a lot of things good that can You can, can get out. assessments, occupational assessments, yes. speech assessments, ADHD type, learning disability type assessments. I mean, there's a myriad. One of my favorite accommodations, we talk a lot about the the importance of hydration and nutrition, specifically every two hours. And that it, there's, there's a neurological shift, a chemical shift of what happens when we satiate hunger and thirst. Um, and that can be really problematic. That's great, Lori, on the weekends. I, I can I can mandate that and I can, um, I can monitor that. But what do you suggest during the school year? And so I suggest every Monday going and bringing a box of granola bars to the nurse's office in your IEP or your ARD, you have an agreement that Johnny can get a pass to go to the nurse's office Mm -hmm. every two hours, be gone for five minutes, eat his granola bar, come back to class. It's not disruptive to the other to the other students. The teacher allows him to go. It's not disruptive to her, but he's he's able to satiate that hunger, get that protein and modulate those dopamine and serotonin levels. And once those are modulated, my opportunity for learning increases exponentially my right. ability to to be regulated in social and appropriate ways is more profound because i was able to self care and so i love i love 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 that accommodation well and i think if 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 we could get this message into schools and classrooms and help and help administrators and educators know that that when a child is 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 anxious or scared and they're operating from from the limbic system of their brain um that the part of your brain where where memories are coded to the hippocampus, right? Your your amygdala will actually um, send chemi- send uh, signals to that part of your brain that allows you to experience things. So the neurons fire, but it prevents them from wiring, mm. right? So you don't learn anything. And so there is there's a lot of brain research and brain re- science that points to the fact that when people are afraid, they can't learn new things. No. There's no capacity for it. Uh, right. Uh, you can't, your brain literally doesn't code the memory. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, does that change the way you think about being willing to send Johnny to the nurse's office every two hours for, for a granola bar? Right. I would hope that it would. Yes. Right. But, but these are the messages that, that we have to get into the public school system, mm-hmm. the private school system, to homeschoolers, and to everywhere. We're education, in an education environment. Yeah. You know, it's slow, but it's progressing. I mean, I, I even well, love... We took a step forward this year with the governor signing that at some point in the future, all classroom teachers have to have some level of trauma-informed care. Oh, absolutely. Governor of Texas, for those of you in New Mexico. That's right. This doesn't apply to you. Oh, but... Pennsylvania signed it into law yesterday, I think. And Pennsylvania? Right. And, and Ohio, Pennsylvania. Ohio. You didn't, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> By the way, I've run out of my knowledge of states, so you can finish now. I'm but even things now, 30 years later, that would, was were never okay for me to be in school. Water bottles are almost mandated. Letters, make sure your kid comes to school with yep. a water bottle. Love that. And then gum is chewing being gum. chewing gum, especially during mm. star testing and and, and big um, scholastic days that, that they make concessions for that to have your gum. And yep. I thought, man, I had to hide mine behind my ear because I thought that's what you do. And then all the hair sticks to to it, and then I just had a one-sided crop haircut. Did you know this about her? Circa 1986. No, I, <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, I didn't know it she was, was going. Awesome. We just hit cigarettes and bound our ears. No, oh, I would roll those in my shirt sleeve. How do we feel about <laughs> cigarettes in the classroom? Are we advocating for that? No, I'm, I'm no. opposed to children smoking. What about cigarettes? the bathroom? No, I don't think children should smoke. Yeah. No. I can be on board with no. that. Only when they're on fire. <laughs> I don't poop. It was terrible. Yeah. Why didn't you stop me? <laughs> it was it was too bad. I'm gonna suggest you edit it out, but that's your call. <laughs> Please don't. Um, it, gosh, man, you guys are y'all are providing a lot of really good information. I, I'm 100 percent confident that folks are getting stuff out of this, and and it, it may be stuff that people already know, but it's good to hear, right? right? I mean, so many times we know what we should do, and and where the kind of failure point comes in is actually implementing what we know that yep. we should do, right? Um, and I think you've given some really practical stuff. Right? Good, like, I hope so. Like taking a box of, of granola bars to the nurse's office and, and making arrangements. I mean, that's, that's good, yeah. That's tangible. Like that's something that somebody can say, okay, yes, I'm going to remember to tell my husband to get that and do that and so on and so forth or the other way around, whichever. Um, I wanted to say real quick, uh, and, and we are nearing the end of, of our allocated time for this topic, 
Um, but I wanted to remind folks that um, with all of this preparation and sometimes uh, preparation and planning and, and, and all of this can start to feel like obligation and, and it can become crushing. And, and if the, the first time that something doesn't go according to the mm. plan, sometimes people can kind of spiral into a place of just scrap the rest of it. Yeah. I want to encourage you not to do that and give yourself grace um, go into this with the with the knowledge that, you know, there's nothing you're going to do during this time period that is going to destroy the rest of everything. Well, I mean, I suppose there could be, but it's highly <laughs> unlikely unless you're <laughs> unless you're just if that's your goal, maybe um, give yourself grace. Yep. Uh, build that into your plan. Yes. Build build space in there for you, for your husband to pick up the wrong kind of granola bars or or for you to forget to schedule whatever or for your child to experience some trauma that they saw, you know, that, were, that was unforeseen. Uh, they get bullied the first day or something right. like that, right? I mean, there's uh, build in life happens is what you're saying. Yes. Build in life happens space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is this the part of the proceedings we ask for our closing thoughts? Because if you are, I'll hold it till you ask me. Or if, but if you're not, I'm just going to say it. I think okay. I think this is I think this is the best time of the whole episode for you to provide us with your closing thought. And I like the fact that he's going first because he can't ditto you. I was going to ditto him. Oh, Come on, I'm going to say something so really it stupid. Better be something really good. <laughs> yeah, you're already locked in now. You can't. No take yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, in an odd way, you've already shared your closing thought. Um, now, what I was going to say. Uh, is there there is a movement um i don't know about movement maybe but we are heading in this direction where where people are understanding trauma more and, and there are people going into classrooms and educating and a friend of ours just flew to california yesterday and spending today and tomorrow with teachers um in california discussing trauma and stuff in the classroom so so it's not just that but the teachers are becoming more knowledgeable because they have lives outside of being teachers and some teachers have adopted and some teachers do foster and so they're learning these things and their programs are teaching these things in the schools now and so um just with that in mind that if the teacher who might have some level of trauma informed in her or him uh, notices something about your child and and work and and that it works, and then they're kind enough to offer that as a suggestion mm -hmm. or something you might try at home. Do not be resistant, and just because the teacher told you to do it, you weren't going to do it. Uh, but listen, because there are people in, in educational environments who are learning about the brain and trauma's impacts on the brain and how that affects a child's ability to cope. And, and so, you know, if if they if they if they notice something and something that's working that they're trying. Um, have a real relationship with them, and that's one where there is give and take in, in, in the flow of information and not just fold your arms and not going to do it because the school said you had a kind of attitude. That was really good. It was good. Are you going to ditto that? <laughs> ditto. Oh, no. That I'll, I'll... It's like ditto. No, I'm not agreeing with him. <laughs> that, was, that was unsatisfactory. <sighs> Unsatisfying is what I meant. <laughs> Unsatisfactory. <laughs> Right. You've been judged. You've been weighed and measured <laughs> been. and found wanting. I feel, I feel like I'm going to give us a C minus on our usage of words today. And words are hard. Flumbling. Flumbling. Hey, flumbling? Hey, hey. flumbling. Yes, flumbling. flumbling. Don't make fun of us. You're not podcasting. <laughs> you get up here and sit in this chair. That's what I'm saying. I'd like to apologize to everybody, you know, the three people watching still. <laughs> For Sean and Lori's conduct, it's unbecoming. Yes, thank you, Lori's father. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Jerry Jones, we appreciate you. Your dad's name is Jerry Jones? Yeah, no, so wow. cool. How have you heard this from us? We're like, I know. We, we can like, like not only see the Cowboys Stadium from where we are, we can like smell it. Why do we not have season passes? Well, I'm working on it. Okay. How? He's been busy in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, and how did I not know that Cowboys owner was a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hush-hush. He tries wow. to stay Seriously, your dad's name's Jerry Jones. Uh -huh. That's pretty cool. Jerry L. Jones. I, I feel like I feel like we probably saved the audience and the rest of my questions about your dad. So. <laughs> yes. I keep waiting for someone to come along who's famous, whose name is Sean Wilson, that I can like. Feel like that's me. Like coattail ride, but <laughs> no, no such luck. No luck. Yeah. This, Try this, fungi. This shows. I think best, your I odds think. of having somebody famous named Sean Wilson are far surpassing mine. Okay. <laughs> Then that's my closing thought. <laughs> um, just breathe. I mean, I think it's a stressful time anyways. Kids amp up. It's going to be a change. It's something new. Um, like Ryan was, or Sean was saying, Ryan's was good too, but when Sean was saying, 
about I'm taking the-, the educational theme too far the grading <laughs> of the comments. Sean <laughs> Wilson, Sean Wilson, Sean Wilson. <sighs> giving yourself the, um, some grace mm. as you endure. Um, and it's going to be rocky starting. Everything you start is always rocky. There's a learning curve and there's a process and uh, allotting yourself the grace in that process, um, especially especially if this kiddo is really new to your home. Mm. Um, I'm going to say something rather unorthodox, but I think any kiddo that has the the history and the story that many of our kiddos do, my number one priority is working through that history rather than wondering or hoping that they're going to get A's in science Mm. and and B's in math. And so um, I am going to encourage you that when the homework feels completely unbearable, that maybe we just say we're not going to do homework tonight Mm. and we're just going to sit and we're just going to be with one another and I'm going to hold you and I'm going to sing with you. And when he doesn't want to go to school five days in a row because of his stomach ache, we're not going to the doctor, but we're laying in bed with him saying, buddy, tell me what's going Mm, on. Um, we are such a culture that puts such a high um, priority on academics, and I don't think that's to a fault. If anybody, I absolutely love academics, um, but I also can appreciate the capacity of, of my children and, and what's being expected and asked of them. And if it's not there, it's not there. And mm. so we need to shift our priorities alongside them. Ditto. <laughs> that's good stuff. That's good Thank stuff. You. That's why I wanted to be a my name attached to it. And so I said ditto. I get, yeah, that's, is that what ditto means? <laughs> Just ditto mean I, I want my name attached to that? Well, okay. So I think we've had a great episode. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give a shameless plug for one of the services that we provide here at CK Family Services because, um, I mean, if you're in New Mexico, this won't do you any good at this point in time unless maybe, it, you know, decades down the road we've expanded into New Mexico. But um, CK Family Services started up a program about four or five years ago. We actually enhanced an existing behavioral health program that we had. <clears throat> and um, we've grown this program pretty dramatically. If you if you are a uh, person living in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex and you have a child who is covered through Medicaid, whether that be Star Health uh, or Star or Star Kids, uh, there is a really good chance that that you can qualify for some of the services that we provide through this program. And one of the things that we're able to do, assuming that your school district uh, will come alongside or or allow us to come alongside. Uh, in this venture is is we will send uh, highly skilled, highly trained, uh, qualified mental health professionals into your child's school, into the classroom uh, to help uh, to help with their behavior in in that school environment. And it's it's not like uh, it's it's not like what you might think if you were to send a counselor in. It's not disruptive. It's it's a coming alongside. Mm-hmm. The experience is very much almost like a uh, like a teacher's aid. Uh, to some extent, we've we've got we've got teachers that have experienced this service that we provide and, and are begging for us to come in and work with every child they've got yeah. in the classroom. True. And we've got parents that are like, you know, I was about to lose my job if I was called by the school one more time to have to come and pick up my kiddo. Uh, and and then your services came along, and now you know things are 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 smoothing out and, and stabilizing. Um, but if if you are in a situation where you know you're a foster parent who has a child with some struggles uh, and they're particularly in the school district, uh, look us up. Uh, you can you can find that information at uh, ckbh.org, and uh, that's short for ckbehavioralhealth.org. There's a referral form on there. It, it is not for the faint of heart. It's it's a pretty robust referral form. Yeah. Um, but uh, but you can send that in, and and if we've got a clinician available, we'll we'll get you uh, all set up, and and if not in time for school to start shortly thereafter. Absolutely. I think that's it, guys. Did anybody see the bow on it? I see a bow. I see a bow. I see a bow. It's, it's pretty. It's, it's blue. Big and oh, mine's red. It's pink. On blue ribbons for yours first place. Yours is actually pink. Ours are blue, and yours pink. Oh, all right. On blue ribbons, first place. Yes. So we're going to well, certify this episode as Blue Ribbon Certified Episode. And to spare Dr. Jerry Jones go. the suffering of this long closure, I'm going to actually have ended the show like five minutes ago before my CKBH plug. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, don't forget, guys, seriously, uh, we are trying to grow the show. We're really encouraged by uh, participation that we've seen in the in the Facebook group that we've set up. If you have not already joined there, just sign up. If, if you're if you're shy and you don't want to participate, you can voyeur. We'll let you lurk. Yeah. You can you can pay attention just to what other people are corner. saying. Uh, that Facebook group is is the name of the show, Foster Family Matters. It's just you know at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash yeah. Uh, you can also uh, download our episodes. 
uh, at our show page, which mm-hmm. is fosterfamilymatters.org. Um, we do ask that if you enjoy the show, please help us spread it around by uh, liking and subscribing. Sharing. Subscribe. Subscribe. That's the big thing. We get a lot of downloads. I haven't seen a lot of uh, subscriptions, but uh, every every Thursday, every other Thursday, we put one of these out uh, first thing in the morning, and um, the downloads just spike through the roof. It's been pretty good. But, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment uh, mm-hmm. positively if you enjoy the show. And um, that's it. Yeah. Anything else? No, you're good. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Adios.